It's another beautiful Sunday afternoon. This is Robin Minds. Welcome. My name is Ebuka Obiuchi, and thanks a lot for joining us. Um, it's our very last show in the month of November. December is here, or like uh, many people in Lagos like to call it, Dirty December. But it's also uh, a very scary time of the month or of the year for a lot of Nigerians. Uh, in the past week alone, multiple, multiple reports of just tragedy across the country on the Kaduna, uh, Abuja Expressway, parts of the southeast. There's just multiple stories of people being attacked and even killed um, while trying to move around in uh, the country. And it's very, very worrying for a lot of Nigerians because December traditionally is a time when Nigerians uh, travel. Some go back home to their families, some just take time off uh, for vacations and all of that. So there's going to be a lot of road tripping and air traveling. And it makes people wonder what's to come in the month uh, ahead. Um, hopefully the, Nigerian, the Nigerian security operatives are going to be on top of things, but as things stand now, it, it's not very encouraging or heartwarming for a lot of people. And so, I mean, transportation will be a lot of, we're in a lot of people's minds uh, in the month uh, to come. And we're going to be zoning in on that uh, in our very first conversation on the show today. I have here with me Dami Lola or Loki Shushi. Thanks for being here today. You're the founder of, uh, of Shuttlers, but we're going to get to that first of all. I want to talk about, you know, transportation generally in Nigeria is one of the biggest um, be a fundamental part of our of our life here and it's something i think for as long as we have been alive it's a conversation that has been going on it's either they are fixing a major road or we're talking about accidents or we're trying to start a new agency like road safety or we're reforming things it's like we still haven't gotten a full hang of it and like i said at the start of the show i saw multiple videos uh, recently about you know how just road transportation is still a nightmare in a country like this is security the biggest issue with transportation, you think, in Nigeria or the roads, or is it both, even? Um, it's, it's a mixture of so many things. I think security is a huge you know, factor for intercity transportation, uh, but the intercity, you know, the infrastructure, the roads, um, uh, inadequate, is not even enough. Public transportation is not enough for the growing, growing population. But for intercity, security is a major, major factor that's affecting the way people are commuting, are able to do, you know, economic activities um, which each other as a state. Yeah. So, I mean, private, the private sector has been a huge player. Uh, traditionally in, in Nigeria, we've had all of the young short grows, ABCs, and all of these companies that have sort of come in and have become a part of the fabric of transportation, especially intercity transportation. Uh, um, before we started here having this ride sharing, which has now made even intercity movement different. Um, is it a space that governments should still be involved in, you think? Um, not that they are really involved in, in the movement of people per se, but talking about, I mean, we are even seeing companies like Dangote, for example, fixing roads, you know. Is private sector going to be the answer to a lot of these problems, you think? I think there has to be like an handshake um, with the public and private sector. Um, definitely the government has to come in because it's um, something, I mean, transportation is supposed to be like an infrastructure that the government sets in space to ensure that there's a, a minimum, you know, living standard that we I mean, improve for the citizens. So um, if they are not involved and it's just private guys, then it becomes very expensive and the everyday man will not be able to afford transportation. So if yeah. there's that handshake, where it's affordable and very accessible. Um, if the government says, oh, I want to do you know, the infrastructure, I want to provide policies that would help the private guys be involved, maybe reducing tax or reducing, if you fix this road, we'll help you do this. So there has to be that handshake where you know, they both collaborate to make things work. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at some statistics here. Uh, in 2018, the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics uh, said that there were 11.8 million registered vehicles in Nigeria um, for 198 million people at the time which is about 0 0.06 cars per person, uh, or one car per 0 0.06 person or something like that. Some people might think that's low, considering how hectic Lagos is. I mean, people tend to think there's a lot more cars than there actually are. Yeah. Does that mean there are not enough roads? So first, to add to that statistics, yeah. one quarter of all those roads in Nigeria are all in Lagos. And it's because of, of the cars, you mean? Yes, of the cars are in Lagos. And yeah. it's because this is a city you know, of major economic activity. Which is why Lagos is the way it is. Yes. Um, yes, I think it's, you know, correct. Um, I lost a bunch of the Yeah, I'm just saying, is that, why do you think... ...availability of those modes of transportation. People are set out on the road. There should be um, um, intra-city, you know, um, ferries or air shuttles, you know, that can provide security. You know, people can move around securely. Um, it's just 
that inadequacy that is the problem. It's not really yeah. about the roads, but it's part of the factors that affect it. I mean, you mentioned there, I mean, the Lagos State Government will tell you that their, their waterways are becoming even more active and they're trying to invest heavily in that in the coming, in the coming years. Um, but the rail, for some reason, is probably going on almost 20 years now from when it was inaugurated. And we're still not sure even when the first, you know, trains are going to move on them. And it's something that is so fundamental to a city like this. We've yes. seen some of the biggest cities in the world, whether it's Mumbai, Tokyo, London, New York, yes. those cities thrive because they have a thriving rail system. You mm -hmm. can't have a dense population like this without that. Why is it taking so long, you think? Is it something that will ever even come on stream? And you think that is actually the solution? If we ask them, I'm sure they will say maybe investment, um, stalling the growth or the rate at which is, you know, um, being built. But I think they've improved. I mean, we have Lagos City now, and they're currently doing the intra-city one, the blue line and the red line. So yeah. I think there's some improvement, but it's not just fast enough. And the funny thing is, you know, if you've planned five years ago that you're, you're catering to five million people, now exactly. in 2012, that number has tripled or quadrupled, right? So... Um, I think it might be an, a problem with um, investment. Um, I'm sure that if they have some kind of collaboration, because we are open to collaborating to helping in them, people have access to mass transit. Um, if there's a handshake, like I said earlier, um, maybe things will be faster. Yeah, because right? the blue line is one thing, but there's also so many other lines that are planned. I mean, the Agile Leki Ekbe access is becoming a nightmare for a lot of people who live around those areas. The rail system is very, very needed there. We have a road that's almost <laughs> crumbling. Yeah. I mean, people are there in traffic for hours every single day. We also have a port that's going to be opening there very soon, which makes it even scarier for what that road might become, you know. Mm -hmm. So you wonder, I, I mean, I, I think I saw the Lagos State government saying in their budget that they're trying to invest more in roads and all of that. But are roads, more roads going to answer this is what the question is. Because, yes, the, the rail is coming, but... There are certain axes that will definitely need it faster. And if the first one is taking 12, 15 years to build, these are the areas that need it. How long will they take before, you know, they even have theirs, if you know what I mean? When it comes to the issue of transportation, I always try to look at, like, the fundamental problem. Why, why, why is it that people are moving into Lagos, like, in troops and in millions, right? I feel like if we develop um, other neighboring cities, for example, I grew up in Ibadan, if... If I don't was developed, if there were jobs in Ibadan, I would not come into Lagos. So I feel like other cities need to be developed to create jobs so that people will not see the need to always move into Lagos. So that reduces the rate at which the population grows because it affects the investment that the government is also putting into the sector and it's not like it's not it's not it's not just enough, you know, it's not adequate. So yeah. that's the number one solution I see there. Secondly, um, there has to be some kind of hand I think the, it's over, I think it's overwhelming for the government to handle alone. Yeah. I think that there has to be handshake again, uh, private sector, um, startups. There's a lot of investments right now on technology, startups and everything. If there, there can be you know, some kind of synergy that can provide intermodal form of transportation where a system where you know, both the ferry, the road, the rail, cable system, you know, all of them are all connected. People have so many options and people are not you know, inclined to drive in Lagos. There would be, you know, um, that's the solution I see. Not, yeah. you know, more, more so, sorry, uh, we'll come back to Lagos now, but just still talking about uh, on, a, on an intercity uh, scale. You know, air travel is still something that is, private sector has done quite well there, but it still doesn't seem to work as efficiently as most people would think, you know. Everybody tells you after the first flight, you're on your own. <laughs> Anything yeah. you see after that, you take, you know. The government is back again talking about launching a national carrier next year. The Lagos um, new terminal is still not up on stream. The air side of things, I mean, there's start and stop, start and stop. What are your thoughts on a national carrier? Is this something we need, for example? Do you think that's <sighs> probably the answer to the delays and almost the non-apology that comes after that? And just the way the air, air, traffic, air, tra air travel works here. Honestly, um, I, I, would, <laughs> <laughs> I would say they should just, you know, partner with, with private guys, right? Um, 
And you know, to, solve, to answer your question about you know, what are the challenges for private guys that are still involved, I think that there's not enough competition. They've been doing it for years, maybe 20 years, 25 years. I think there's, people need to now see that the sector that is, you know, not just fintech or the reigning thing. People need to come into the sector and make it competitive. Disrupt it. Yes, properly. and disrupt it. So when there's competition and they would, they would, customers would win because you're all striving to serve customers better. You would make sure that your, your systems are efficient. So I think that, you know, people need to come into it and disrupt that sector. Um, yeah. So you, you, are the CEO, you are the founder of Shortlands. What does Shortlands do? Because I'm trying to understand, I know there's a lot of ride-sharing mm -hmm. uh, companies that we have in Nigeria already. What's different about Shuttlers? Okay. And why is it going to sort of disrupt, like you say, uh, a space like this? Okay. So before Shuttlers was created, I mean, we have, you know, two forms. Um, as a professional, there are two options that you have. Is either you have access to public transportation that is affordable, but it's not comfortable, right? You know, challenges, seating arrangements, road bridging you know, security issues. And then they have ride hailing services where they're expensive. If you're a young professional, you cannot use that service every single day. Then you have shuttlers right in between. There is a shared mobility platform that is both comfortable and affordable, right? Um, and the reason why we've created that system is to, um, we create, create using a mass transit sharing model. So we don't use, we don't do private car service. We share um, using cars and mostly buses, 14-seater um, buses and 25-seater buses. We recently took a survey on our platform and realized that about 20 to 30 percent of our customers use cars, meaning that every time uh, we have 29, 29 people in a bus, that means that 20 to 30 percent of them have um, dropped their car at home to use our service, and then we've reduced the number of cars on the road. So that's how we're solving the problem in an African way, because you know that, I mean, economic challenges, people can't really afford too much, but they also want comfort, right? And they want something that is reliable and efficient. So our service kind of works like the London bus service, where you can look at the timetable on the platform. You search using your pickup location and your destination, and you look at the buses coming along those routes, and then you pick one of them, right? Right now, our service is about 60 to 80 percent cheaper than ride hailing services, and there's no surge of peak pricing. Um, the only thing that can affect the price right now is the uh, <laughs> price of fuel, right? So um, that's how shuttle service works. So why should I, for example, decide to use a, a, a service like that if I have like a BRT, which most people already think is affordable, anyways, and it's pretty much has a schedule even yeah. if it's not particularly timed, but you kind of know when the BRT arrives at a certain bus stop and when you want to get to work and when to wait for it and all of that. Why should I leave that and decide to do a shuttle, for example? It's, a, it's the reliability. Like, um, so, for example, on a platform, you can book um, for in a month advance where you are secured of a seat. I mean, we've, we're currently talking to BRT guys, so also work with them. Why? I mean, we don't own buses, so... We, I, what, what we do is that we aggregate these buses, um, we vet them, we're creating a system where you can access comfortable transportation. So we, there's a, we believe in a world where we're going to be able to work with um, public transportation, place them on our platform, they're going to be scheduled, people can track their bus, they can book a seat in advance, you don't need to come to the bus to fight for seats or create a long line, you know, and you're not really sure if you're going to get to your destination um, on time. Um, in a world where, you know, you can actually plan your journey from Lagos to Abuja, you know, um, where you've, we've told you the bus to pick, so if you want to get to Abuja in five, by 5 p.m., that's what we're trying to build. Yeah. So how do you do that? Because I mean, we hear a lot of stories about, you know, buses in, in Lagos or even in the country and how the unions work with them and how they are so domineering and how nobody's just has any way to interfere or come in and give them the kind of structure you're talking about. What are you doing? Because that is something that still exists and will mm -hmm. probably still exist for a while, mm -hmm. which is why the buses are still on our streets, mm -hmm. because that, those unions are very powerful. Yes. How do you decide to disrupt a space like that without uh, or with them? How does so, that work? There are two ways to solve our prob I mean, this problem. Um, we, we've picked the easiest way for now <laughs> um, with limited resources. So there's the private sector, staff bus sector, right? And there's the downfall informal sector, right? So it's either we go the informal sector downfall way, which is really hard because you, know, you have to do education, you need to provide more buses, asset financing, or you go to um, the kind of formal private sector, that's the staff bus sector where it's already been you know kind of kind of formal they have the buses already and so that's how we went to those those guys first before yeah. you know, going to those areas yeah sounds very exciting i mean I'm, it's the kind of thing that lagos definitely needs and uh, but looking at back to the intercity 
uh, movement. And December is really worrying me, cause, which is why I started off uh, my show with that. And mm. people are going to be moving a lot, you know. I know maybe Shortlast is not on that uh, national scale yet. But what are your, what's your advice, for example, to people who are going to be traveling this year? You know, air transport, road transport, what, thing, what sort of things should they look out for um, if you're going to be hitting the road or the air in a few weeks? So for road, I would say you should be on an alert. Um, I think th there are a number of companies, I mean, that um, share data on security information. And if you want to apply this road, this is what is happening. If you're going to the east, this is what is happening. You should be informed about where you're going to, what days you shouldn't travel, what are the days that you should travel. And um, you should ensure that you vet. You are going to be the one to vet your own public transportation at this point. You know, um, check that the vehicle has proper, you know, papers before you, as you're about to enter. If you're trying to use the public transportation, you know, ensure you use a secure um, one. Um, there are a number of them where you know they already have that system in place where it's all vetted and all of that. And these are the two key things that I would advise. Yeah. I know we always talk a lot about, you know, London bus, London train, London underground and all of that. But these are two very different countries, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going to look at a model city mm -hmm. that you would like Lagos to sort of be like mm -hmm. or that Lagos should be towing, where would that be and what are they doing that you think we should be looking at very seriously? London. Like okay. you said earlier, I think that train is very, very, like, very crucial. Um, it's, it's just, it's just, it's like it's fundamental. It's just, it's just like... It's like where we should have light every day, yeah. like, right? So that's one of the things that we need to set in place, have that um, mass transit that's able to make people from different point, touch points in the city. That is one major thing that we've, we've, we need to get right. Yeah. Um, if, if, if it's, I mean, just that one yeah. thing. What are your thoughts on Okadas? Okadas. Because <laughs> it's a very touchy topic. Yes. And I know it's banned in Lagos, but it's not banned. We're not sure what's happening. Yes. But, I mean, officially, they are supposed to be off the expressways, which they kind of are, but we mm. still see them around. What are your thoughts on them? For a city like this that needs people to move around, but is also not yeah. very good at regulating something like that. Yeah. So my friends at Max, the founders, you know, they were one of the, you know, um, they were affected by the recent ban of Okada. Yeah. What they were proposing was that they should they would want to be part of the reform, you know, to provide that kind of structure in an unstructured, you know, um, system like that, Okada, because they actually can constitute a nuisance, right? Yeah. And so if, again, the, um, the government is, you know, um, willing to work with private sector, that can happen. But for the Lagos um, transport plan system, they don't see bike as a mode of public transportation. It's not in the plan. So there has to be some kind of re-education or to re-examine what they want to see. Because right now they see it as a, is it, it should just be in the interland and not be on the main, main roads. That it should just be but like a last the argument you, Sorry to cut you yeah. in. How different are they from the Kekheads, for example? I mean, <laughs> in your opinion, yeah. as someone who works in the transport sector, how different are they? Because many people will tell you that the Kekheads are equally a menace to people yeah. with the way they drive, hardly obeying traffic the same rules. People. You know, so why is that one allowed and why is this one not? I mean, you can just say that it can it's helping to reduce the number of bikes on the road because if you have one person, two people on a bike, and then you have four people on Keke, yeah. those um, bigger ones, are, those um, co op ones are yeah. five people or seven people in it. So reducing the number of bikes on the road, you usually have like five, but you have one Keke. Um, yeah. Right now, so I think that's one major difference between KK and, um, and I think that the the risk as well, the accident that people have on the bikes to you know, yeah. cause a lot of accidents. People don't use their um, helmet. helmet, and then that causes um, all of those challenges. I think that is also a major factor. All right. Well, thank you very much. Good luck with shuttlers. We're going to be looking at uh, how much you're able to disrupt this because, I mean, I think everybody who lives in Lagos is looking forward to a better transportation system uh, that works for everybody. So all the best with everything. Thank you so much, Ibuka. We'll take a break now, and we'll be right back. Please don't go away. We represent.